Good day and welcome to another week of A Week at the Plot on this Tuesday afternoon. I've had a, a good two days at my desk. I, I start early in the morning so by the time sort of two o'clock, two thirty, three o'clock comes I've sort of done my day's work. So I thought I'd come down here and get Braskers in. That's my intention. And I brought an egg box down for, for somebody, so pop that on their plot. And then I saw two other plot holders, the ones that have taken over the one just down from me. They were working on that plot. And we were talking the other day about beans. And my fellow plot neighbour said, don't carry on looking at them. They can be a bit shy, so don't look at them and they'll suddenly pop up. And sure enough, the next day uh, they had popped up or three of them had popped up. I didn't really get down here. No, I did get down here yesterday, but uh, I didn't really get down to do anything. But I did notice that a few others had popped up. So I was sort of really looking forward to more germination today in the dwarf beans. I get to the corner of the plot and I noticed that the, the two foot high dwarf sunflower that was fine yesterday evening has been knocked over. And I also find out that a few other things have happened too. Let me show you them. Can you see this? A hole has been dug. We had four germinated here. Three have been cut off in their prime and one is lying in the hole. And if we look over there, you can maybe see one lying on the ground. Here, this one has been broken off. And then over here, I think they're all right at the moment. They're just coming through. But over here, again, you can clearly see there's, I think, three there. There's a bit of stalk in there. So something has, oh, that one's been eaten. Look there. Ah, oh, I don't know. If it's not one thing, it's another. I mean, it's fair to say that we've now got germination in all of our rows of dwarf beans. But we've also got quite a bit of um, chomping of, of one thing or another. I mean, these holes, to me, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that looks like a, a squirrel. But I've never known a squirrel go after um, after beans before. I mean, oh. <laughs> and then if we come over here, there's my, sorry, there's my sunflower. It's just been sort of broken at the at the at the base. I don't even think that's going to come to anything if I put it in water. Actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bamboo next to it and hope for the best. If there's still some threads of life in that broken stem there it may carry on growing. Oh, it's just one thing after another. This is the, these are the beds here that I'm gonna put the brassicas into. So I am going to get on and do that. I think off camera, I've still got the oak in there, just there. So I need to take that out and I need to harvest our broad beans as well.
I've left some sort of go quite fat. Um, I don't know. These are, are producing, but you know, it's growing so slowly. These are later ones. I think I'll just harvest, see how they've been eaten into. I mean, I'm not surprised, you know, this is more of a mess than it usually is this year. Oh, honestly, literally, if it's not one thing, it's another. I've put a bamboo cane in next to this one and pulled it back upright and tied it in. And if all the elements that feed the stem up aren't severed, then maybe there's a chance. Fingers crossed. This bed will be a bed that gets weeded maybe tomorrow or in a day or so. What I have done, this marjoram, I've tied this marjoram up because I know in here there's there's snails. I'm pretty convinced in here there's snails. Can't see any, maybe slugs. So I've shored it up so that it's not going over this bed. And we'll just, um, on this side, just use a judicious scattering of pellets again. But um, as you can see, I've spaced them all out. We've got Brussels sprouts down the middle of both beds. Then I think we've got dazzling blue kale down this side. And I think these are our dazzling blue kale and some Portuguese cabbage and some crosses of the two. So I'm just going to get these in now. These are all now in and as you can see I've got the bottles on top of bamboo canes in it's sort of to deter pigeons and they also make a noise if they get hit and oh I can see a slug oh there you're going in the, uh, there's another one, you're going in the compost heap as well. I'm just going to put them on that bed for the minute. Yes, so these are, these are now in. And I think we've got dazzling blue kale, mainly this side. We've got Brussels in the middle for sure. And this side we've got Portuguese cabbage and the cross of Portuguese cabbage and dazzling blue kale. I'm not... I think apart from the Brussels down the middle, I'm not completely sure that that's correct. But um, because I didn't get all my labelling right this year, or I did, but then I moved things around and labels didn't get moved around. And as I'm going with the flow this year, hey-ho, I'll just find out what they are when they grow. It has got a little bit chilly, so I'll put my shirt back on. It's a bit overcast. I think we're going to get some rain. And if you watch me, oh, little Robin, little, little Robin on the post. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. he's flown off. And most probably, oh, yeah, he's gone over to the bed where I was working on. As I was working around the bed, there were there was one or two Robins that kept on darting down. <clears throat> so I assume they're a couple because Robins are quite territorial. So I think they'd have chased each other away if they weren't a, a couple. Anyway, yes, I... Hopefully those are protected from pigeons. I mean, it, you know, famous last words and all of that. I will think about netting them tomorrow. I'm also going to, or likely, because I've got enough compost, I, I think I might mulch the top of them as well. I haven't done it today because I'm not an Instagram um, gardener 
uh, allotment here. You know, many I know many allotmenteers. They they sort of put well, some not many, some put mulch on top to actually hide what they've done beneath. Um, this soil has been properly worked, and I will top dress it maybe tomorrow or later in the week simply to uh, reduce the amount of weeds that that will grow because I think it's good to do that the robins just darted in front of the the door then uh, it's good to do that but I'm I'm not all about you know the look of things so as you can tell mm -hmm. so I'm yeah I'm not an Instagram allotment here um I'm rambling aren't I I'm rambling yeah I'm rambling those of you who watch me regularly may have noticed I haven't watered those and it's not simply because I think it may rain. I haven't watered them because the, the, the module of compost was quite damp. It was on the sort of wetter side of moist and I don't really want to water them at the end of day when I know that slugs and snails are out and about at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've put them in. They'll be absolutely fine to overnight tonight. I mean, in terms of moisture, whether they will be in terms of slugs, snails, pigeons, um, uh, magpies, squirrels, uh, you name it, you know, parakeets, who knows. But in terms of the moisture in the root ball, they're absolutely fine for overnight. I would normally water them, but that's the reason why I'm not watering them today. I'll be down early tomorrow and I'll water them then. As long as they're still visible, of course, they haven't been eaten. Uh, I have put a few pellets down by that marjoram. Yeah, so I have done that. They're, they're, it, it's sort of more in the marjoram plant than over the beds. So I, I hope that that they will do well. And there is that little robin again. And I think what I'll do if I come down tomorrow is where beans have been pulled out. I will sow some more. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I've got beans here, so I will get on and do that another day. But I'm going to leave it here for this week's A Week at the Plot. And I think I'm going to sit outside and just watch the two robins dart about because clearly they're enjoying themselves. So I think I will enjoy watching them. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's really breezy today. And uh, I've just popped down to collect two thermoses for a work social tomorrow I've checked on the brassicas and they seem to be doing okay not munched so far as much as I thought they might be interestingly it's these down here these four here that have been munched and actually those two over there the ones that I thought would be along here haven't been I've also noticed, finally, just move out the way. Oh, I'm not moving out the way, am I? Our tomatoes have started growing, the ones that are left. And no further damage to the beans. And I'll be sowing some more where they have been damaged. Um, yeah. Interestingly, the beans this side... At this end, a much germination has been much poorer. How very, very odd. Now that had uh, really good compost put on top from the perennial compost, perennial weed compost bin over there. This one didn't. And uh, yeah, it's this one that germination seems pretty tardy even though they're all the same seeds. Well, I mean, the ones sowed along here, same seed, in the middle, a different seed, that's Bolotti, and along here, I think, is Rock and Core. But, um, yeah, germination in this bed, slower than that bed over there. And our lettuce here, which I put in a short while ago, they're 
beginning to take on some growth which is great and I think I'm going to be sowing this side re-sowing this side with carrots the Santalina is really beginning to open now which is lovely these are the two thermoses that I've come down to get so I'll be taking those home and I hope to have a sort of day here on Sunday maybe Saturday afternoon carry on cutting things back really getting this bit sorted here frogs in both of these ponds but they're not protecting our cucumber plants which have mainly been munched in this bed though over here famous last words the courgettes seem to be okay so far and then going into the poly I think I'm going to take these radish out I said about it earlier in the week and they're going to seed I don't want to eat the seed pods so time for them to come out and go into compost this bed's now clear of radish the cost is doing relatively well it's one of the few things that is and here's our pile of radish that has come to nothing and there's one that has yay yay I know people say to me oh you can eat radish leaves we don't like them so these are going to go into our compost bin which actually because of how warm it has been even though it's been wet the compost bin needs some more green so this will do well in the compost bin I popped down just to really get those two thermos flasks to take home to put hot water in for tomorrow and as I was leaving the front door I got a call about emergency services at the allotment and as I was coming down the road and down the, the, the last stretch of road um, several people stopped me and said have you heard what's going on down uh, on the canal and the river and sadly there was a report of a body in the, the river which goes then into the Grand Union Canal and because our river because our boundary here is is the river uh, when I sort of got to the end of the road there's four three fire engines one support fire engine truck two um, two ambulances uh, there's also various other uh, there's police cars and various other support vehicles and um, yeah sure enough uh, they were they they thought they were going to have to launch a boat off our our um, our land here but um, it seems that the the activity moved down to the canal so uh, I sadly think that there there may have been a, a body and it's been uh, found in the canal um, anyway you know these you know tragedy absolute tragedy these things do happen um, I think it's all big uh, I mean the, the emergency vehicles are all still there but I can see that the the fire engine shutters at the side where they get all their equipment out from the side those shutters which were open when I came down here about 20 25 minutes ago are now closed and the firemen that are walking around are in uh, sort of red t-shirts rather than their their sort of you know emergency service gear um, and as I was sort of doing things around the site picking up the, the, the thermos flask from the community shed uh, the communal shed there I had to you know let various people in and out emergency service people in and out so there's a sad day for a family and you know maybe more 
Um, but that, yeah, it's people go on about emergency services and the NHS and all of that, you know, let's just accept it's simply complete underfunding by our government that the services that we we have the excellent services that we have are stretched so thin and so far so yeah you know i will always um uh, uh, hold a flag for for people in emergency services and and you know that type of thing anyway anyway i have that radish um, I'm going to just give it a little nibble. It's the only one out of that packet that has come to anything like a size that I might buy in a shop. Um, I'm going to give it a little nibble and see what what it's like. I haven't yet. I tore the root off, but I haven't eaten that bit. Mmm. Earthy, I think, is the the uh, the phrase. Mm. Earthy and thankfully not woody. Yay for my successful growing of radish! Hey ho, hey ho. Um. It was rather lovely, actually. Um, I feel I feel very guilty for not having saved half of that radish for Richard, though. Oh, poor Richard, poor Richard. Right, I'm going to put that in the compost bin. Um, I mean, you know, it's like there's more going into the compost bin, even in that one plant, than I think I ate. But uh, there we are. I will see you very soon. We've got a so work social tomorrow, mainly cutting back grasses around the uh, communal paths here. And I hope the rain will keep off. At the moment, it's very, very, very breezy, really quite breezy. Blue skies, white clouds though. So I hope we have that tomorrow, though I think we're due more rain. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. I've just cleared most of our ball beans. That's the harvest, that's the detritus. And I've left two in. Oh, ice cream van. Yeah, so. All of this is gonna go into our compost, obviously. And these I will sort out some are are pretty fine some as you can see have been munched the the bed itself is in need of weeding but it's that area there I need to sort out and that's going to be my main sort of focus I think for for next week other than a bit of seed sowing this area sorting it out and weeding that bed but i've left these two in two plants in simply because there's some still growing on this one and this one seems to be relatively free of slugs however if it does nothing in the coming two weeks or doesn't do something substantially in the coming two weeks i'll most probably take it out but yeah, my first job is to pop this into the compost bin and then 
from this afternoon onwards is sort of clearing around here and just getting on top of this area yeah or hopefully on top of the area I think it's fair to say that that isn't the best broad bean harvest we've ever had uh, by far is it the worst broad bean harvest we've ever had and I think much of it will end up on our plate as broad bean garlic and walnut pesto so I will be blanching some of those broad beans in fact I think most of them and then blitzing them with garlic and a little bit of olive oil and some salt and freezing those in portions and then that means that I'll be able to take a portion of that mix out of the freezer like in the afternoon adds up once it's defrosted some crushed walnuts and we'll be able to have that uh, with pasta in the evening so yeah that's what I'm going to do with those and as I say I'm just going to be tidying I'm I'm going to be doing a bit of seed sowing next week um, some direct and some in modules lettuce I think in modules but I'm not pushing myself I'm going to push myself to just get on top of the plot and get it tidy and get it in the way that I want it for growing next year which for us starts in October I know that's anathema to many of you but our our year starts in October because that's when we put the garlic in that's when we put the broad beans in so that's where we start and yeah there's a there's a lot of work to do I I started in the raised bed behind the bench of the polytunnel side of the plot the other day I took out uh, perpetual spinach that was bolting uh, I have feverfew in there which is flowering at the moment and there's also leeks that are going to seed as well so they're going to flower and then they will form seed I'm I'm going to be sowing in that in a few weeks time I'm likely going to be sowing carrots in there I think and I'm going to be sowing some more carrots in the other raised bed that we've got by the shed so that I think is going to be going on next week but mainly my head is in tidying cutting back grasses getting rid of cooch grass that has grown and just getting on top of the plot again because I felt at various points this growing year that I've been on top of it and then for whatever reason usually down to how wet it's been or down to um, just sort of feeling a bit about it I just haven't kept on top of things and then of course what we have had is sort of warm humid weather with lots of moisture and that has got all the weeds growing so there are certain things that I'm going to be doing as I say that that the front bit I need to sort that out I've also got quite a lot of sort of empty pots so we've got some sedum which is growing individually in pots but two of them have died off over last winter so they those pots still have compost in so they can go there's where where the brassicas are at the moment there's a few cells of in those trays of brassicas that are empty so they need to be emptied and put onto beds um just to you know add compost to the beds there's also those basil that we sowed in pots in the greenhouse they haven't come to anything so they need to be emptied there's no point in them being in there um, as they are at the moment so I'm going to empty those I do have a pot in front of me a, a, a trug a yellow trug of compost and that is mainly spent compost but it's clean spent compost so I think most of what we have seen will either go into that or go onto beds so yeah that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon there's a few things that need to be potted on and I'm going to carry on doing those um, or carry on my afternoon by doing those so yeah that's it that's it for this week's a week at the plot and thank you very much for for all your comments last week 
you know what what you see is what you get here you know we're as i said we're not an instagram gardener at the beginning of the week you know it doesn't we don't make things look good so that they look good for the camera what what you see is what you get literally that used to be a, a trademark of um, microsoft when they started doing website design but um yeah anyway I'm going to go. I'm going to go because I will ramble, which I know many of you do like, because it is what you expect from me and it's what you expect from a week at the plot. And you know what? That's lovely. That's lovely. I'd rather have, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand people watching a week at the plot each week and thinking it's valuable than ten thousand who are sort of going on about what uh, I'm doing wrong. Because, of course, this is this is my plot. This is my week at the plot. So if things do go wrong, you hear about them because I tell you about them. Anyway, I hope whatever is happening at your garden, your growing space or your allotment, things are not going wrong for you. But I know from Planet Vegetarian, other social media outlets that a lot of people are struggling this year, you know, throughout the globe. But yeah, I hope de hope things aren't going wrong. If they are, try and keep on top of your well-being and make yourself feel good that you can just carry on with things. And I'm going to be carrying on with things now and also next week. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to wish you well and I'm going to wish you happy growing. Bye.